Because that'd yeah. be a lot of energy. Kind of like the SLS will have. Speaking of SLS and energy, uh, wait, this is okay. I guess we'll talk about SLS. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there's actually been a, uh, quite a few updates in the past couple of weeks, and I just wanted to kind of go through a couple of them. Um, because SLS, again, for those of you uh, uninitiated, SLS is the Space Launch System. It's NASA's um, next and probably final rocket they will ever design and build. Um, because NASA is kind of the, you know, the, that's a weird con- thought. the, what was that? I said, that's a weird thought. I'm, I'm pretty sure because I think it's got huh. so much pushback and it's just, we, you know, we're just knowing that it's not the, the best path forward as opposed to just hiring a commercially available rocket, I think. Um, but here we're seeing it blow up <laughs> clickbait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, here it is blowing up. <laughs> this was uh, fully intentional. This is, uh, this is basically the version of, NASA doing what SpaceX constantly does with Starship, <laughs> which is testing it till failure. Um, this was the What's we saw the out of it water. Oh, yeah. So, um, so they did the the hydrogen tank last year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it was a you know the giant hydrogen tank, and then on top of that, it's the oxygen tank. Um, and these are really the core section of the big orange core section of the SLS is huge. I think it's something like. 220 feet tall or something or 240 feet tall. So like 110 meters tall. This thing is, or sorry, no, that'd be like 65 meters tall or 70 meters tall. Um, it's really, 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 really big. Um, and they tested the hydrogen tank to, to destruction last time. And that went extremely well. This, uh, this one got within 2% of its predicted failure, which I think is also fully acceptable. Um, and so basically they, they take and they have these hydraulic presses and again, we see something very similar to this, uh, out of Boca Chica with Starship. We see those hydraulic rams, um, compressing on the tanks while they pressurize it to, to, you know, help produce flight loads or the same types of stresses that these tanks are going to see, uh, while flying. And, uh, yeah, and it, it, it failed. Oh, here we go. The liquid oxygen tank, the, just the actual oxygen tank is only um, 70 feet tall. Um, so what is that? Like, yeah, like 23, 23. meters or something or so, ish. Um, was bolted onto this, the big old guy. And uh, then they just, they they pushed it until it, they filled it up and, and pushed it until it, uh, it broke. This is kind of cool though. The test campaign, there were five structural test articles, underwent 199 separate test cases and more than 421 gigabytes of data, which is pretty cool. <laughs> just just for this, you know, just for blowing up. And here's the actual video. How much compressed. of that includes the the 4K footage? Because yeah, that's, that's true. It's actually not that impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that went really well. And um, the uh meanwhile the actual core so again that was just a structural test you know that was just just to blow it up but the actual core stage that is sitting out at um at what's it called why am i blanking on what it's called not marshall um i am totally mars no stennis at stennis Stennis. flight center um They so they have the the core sitting out here, and it's actually been out there pretty much the entire year, and it kind of got put on pause because of all the COVID stuff. And now they're getting ready to finally do the full green run, which oh, uh, I kind of read into this. It's actually there's altogether going to be eight tests of this actual core bef- um, while while it's there at um, at Stennis, and, and what basically they're doing different things like turning on all the computers. They'll probably do like a gimbal test of the engines. They'll probably do, you know, a lot of the things that we see uh, eventually doing a static fire, just like what we see a Falcon 9 rocket do often before it launches is they'll just basically do a full thing. And this will end up doing the eight and a half minute burn. So the full because the, the center core starts firing at sea level and burns all the way into orbit, which is pretty unusual. So it, it will run for like eight and a half minutes. Um and then, uh, so that's what they're going to do. They're going to run this baby for, for eight minutes or whatever. And yeah. Oh, 212 feet tall. There we go. It's huge. It's really, really big. Um, it's, it's also, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. So that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> There's something happening. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there is stuff finally happening on this and, um, they're all, they're saying that it's still on track to be launching in 2021. Um, and another part of that is we're finally seeing the booster sections here. I wanted to show you that this cool 
shot here of um, the booster segments arriving by train because they go all the way from, uh, I believe it's Utah, Prominence, Utah area, um, which is where the, the booster segments are are built. And then they're taken by train all the way to Kennedy Space Center. And those booster segments have actually finally arrived at Kennedy Space Center and are actually beginning to be stacked and uh, and and ready to go inside the, the what uh, the... they're like o- over water. We're looking at a train on a bridge over water. Where is that? That's out of the Cape somewhere. Oh, okay. I was thinking like, is this in Utah somewhere? <laughs> no, no, no. So it's it's arrived. This is basically its arrival at um at Kennedy and, Space Center. And people don't shoot at it, really. <laughs> well, that's that was always must not go through Texas. That's something that SpaceX actually always said is like people would ask them why they didn't go by rail. And the answer was because people would shoot at it <laughs> because America. I wonder if it's just a common thing for uh, all train, you know, all containers. Like you're just sitting there in some little town, middle of nowhere. You're like, what the hell? What the, you know, <laughs> target practice on that thing. Seriously. <laughs> well, what else are you going to do? <laughs> it was moving and it was near my property. So I shot it. <laughs> It's um, so these are, are. It's coming right <laughs> for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the booster segments. Um, these are going to be the biggest, most powerful solid rocket boosters. Uh, not actually the biggest, and most powerful ever produced because there was this like one ridiculous one that was like 30 meters wide. Yes, meters wide, not feet. Just absolutely redonkulous one time. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, something just, maybe it was 15 or 20. Like it was insane uh developed in this in the 60s and yeah so these are going to be the most powerful they'll actually fly and they're basically the same thing as the space shuttle they're literally the first um dozen or so boosters um are actually using reflown these are the ones that recovered from the space shuttle because the space shuttle used to reuse those those solid rocket boosters and so these are the actual segments from space shuttles they will not be reused on sls though because that in the grand scheme of things the Recovery and the refurbishment of the solid rocket boosters ended up being more expensive than just building new ones, yeah. unfortunately, or too close to on par to really matter. Make it worth it. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah. So, it, but it, it is good to see some actual progress here and seeing it really start to take steps towards its flight next year. Now, yeah. a solid rocket booster is the one you can't turn off, right? Correct. You yeah. You light just, it. You, and you light run. it, and that's it. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> No turn. Hang yeah, on. the point of no return is the very also the starting point. Yes. Right. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yeah. So that's pretty cool, though. I mean, uh, I I I'm just glad to see progress because I you know I would have liked to. I've said this for a while. I would like to see this happen two or three years ago. Would have been more exciting to me just because it would have filled that gap of like super heavy lifters. And now in the era of Starship and in the era of some of the other things, it's just not as exciting as, as I think it, it would have been three or four years ago. So what do you guys think? What would do you think SLS will actually be like a fun launch to see or? I think I would like to see it. I, I always say, like, I really wish I could have seen the shuttles go up just because those solid rocket boosters are such monsters, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I might come My out. My son is it. dying to get back to Florida, so I would go. But I don't know if it'd I'd... be more exciting than the Falcon Heavy. <laughs> that we saw. I I will th- I actually yeah. think the launch of this, the actual launch, might be the will probably be the the rocket to see um, anytime soon, until Super Heavy comes back to land. Like if Super Heavy yeah. comes back for a return to launch site landing, yeah, you got that will be that. unbeatable. That there's nothing that's gonna beat you know <laughs> like skyscraper falling from the sky and landing. <laughs> Um, but as far as, uh, as far as just a, a regular launch, I think this will be, uh, unbelievably exciting. It'll be kind of that mix between like a Saturn V and a space shuttle and will be insanely loud and yeah. Yeah. I want to see some windows break. <laughs> Car alarms will go off like a hundred percent. It'll be nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking but. forward to it. I need to mention one last thing about SLS that I forgot to mention, and this is actually really (laughs) important news, uh, is that NASA did end up basically, those boosters we were talking about, uh, NASA ended up ordering the boosters for like the next, um, for Artemis 4 through 9, because these are going to be brand new boosters. They aren't going to be using the leftover space shuttle boosters. 
and those are using what's called the the um, bowl boosters, which are um, they're carbon. They'll actually be carbon composite outer wrapping. It's a, it's an upgraded booster, and it's actually a little bit more powerful. Or I don't know about a little bit more powerful, but for sure a little bit lighter. Um, so therefore, better thrust to weight ratio, all that stuff. And those will be because there's such long lead times because you know it takes so long to produce these boosters. They had to order them now for Artemis four through nine. So like they're looking way wow. into like 2030, which is what I, I know that's still. And I know a lot of people just aren't big fans of SLS because it's been so expensive and so you know relative. I mean, relatively far behind schedule. It's about three realistically, which isn't terrible in the space flight three world. Three years. Years, yeah. It's not that bad, really, in the e- world Elon of years or late. normal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's like half of how f- far behind Falcon Heavy was, you know. <laughs> like, um, so it, it just, you know, it, it's it's all relative. But I, I honestly, I do like that we're we're going to have a vehicle that can take us to the moon. Like, period. No, that's, if that's its purpose. Yeah, no if ands or buts about it. Like, it can do it, and it. Yeah, having that that those components already kind of in the in the pipe, you know, making their way down, like as efficient as they are and as expensive as they are, I'm I'm glad they exist because I want us to be going back to the moon. So, mm-hmm. yeah, cool, That's exciting. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, me too. So yeah. there you go. I feel like that was something that we needed to mention that they won contracts <laughs> for twelve more SRBs. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this clip from our show. If that's just not enough for you and you want to watch the full episode, you can go to olfpod.com slash YT. And if you want more from us, you can consider becoming a Patreon member. You'll get early access to episodes. You can join our awesome community. You can actually watch us record live and get your name in the credits by going to olfpod.com slash Patreon. So thanks everyone for watching. Check back every Friday for new clips here and new episodes on the main channel. Thanks, everybody.